بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Is it the people that change or the masks that fall? Double standards, sacred life, all these masks, forms of deception, attributes, qualities, which are just portrayed at a type of a facade which will catch up with one sooner or later. So part of this is that if a person becomes so oblivious that eventually he forgets himself. So when some ulama are giving a lecture and we hear it, then we think, who will fit this? So it fits for this person, it fits for this person. We hear about the punishment of lying, so we think, oh, so and so, he should have been here, he would have heard the bayan, could have been beneficial. We don't think how many times I lied, how many times I spoke a lie. The alim speaks about good character. So the wife is there, she's thinking if only the husband was here or vice versa. If they were here, they should be hearing this. We don't ever think I should be hearing it. I am here, it is my need. So that's why the saying goes, relationships are killed by lies and secrets. Relationships are killed by lies and secrets. So we love in this lie, we love in the secret. We need to be very careful. So they say some people get so good at deception that they don't even know they deceiving themselves. Some people get so good at deception, they don't even know they deceiving themselves. So the world is filled with problems, we need to find solutions. They say once there was a crow flying over a field and was looking for water, so she was weak and on the last moments she seen a jug below her, so she flew straight to the jug. She tried but she was unsuccessful, she tried to push the jug down for the water to flow and uh, she lost hope and then a thought came to mind, she seen pebbles. So she started picking up a pebble one by one and dropping it into the jug. As the pebbles filled the jug, the water level had risen and it was sufficient for the crow to drink. So no matter what problem, what situation, what difficulty, we need to be looking for solutions. Not thinking about the problem, but thinking about the solution and then doing the amal we shall draw the help and the nusrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, a person will be oblivious, they will be living in a dream world, they will think so everything is all good, all okay. Sahaba nafaqa hanzala, in the company of Nabi alayhi salam going home, seeing the condition of Iman decreasing and forgetting the kafiyat and the awareness of Jannah and Jahannam, and he's saying that I am a munafiq. When he meets us at Abu Bakr, normally somebody comes with a masla and say, you know what, I, got, I don't have khushu in salat. Then you give him a long lecture, a long bayan, how to get khushu in salat. But did you ever think that how much khushu and concentration I have in salat? Abu Bakr didn't say, oh, anzala, I'm the greatest of the Anbiya, so this is a solution. He said, nafaka Abu Bakr. That Abu Bakr has become a munafiq and a hypocrite. So always pointing to oneself will mean progress and pointing to everybody else will mean retrogression. So living in this dream world, this is a milkmaid on her way to the market to sell milk from a cow. So she was carrying it in a jug on her head and then she started dreaming, you know, when I sell this milk here, I'll buy a hundred chicks, I will rear them in a backyard, I will grow them, then I will sell them in the market, then I will buy goats and then I will rear the goats and I have a big number, I will buy cows and then after the cows I will increase and then have a lot of milk and I will distribute and after distribution I will be amongst the richest in the country and I will fulfill my needs and I will, I will, I will do this and do this and as she jumped for elation thinking that I will have reached my climax in life 
the jug broke and all the milk spilled onto the ground. Now her dreaming ended and she started crying. So it should not be also we building this facade and oblivious of the realities of Akhirat. And when the angel of death comes and the milk spills, we realize there's only a mirage. So this doka, this mask, the, the a deceptive mask is self-worship. Where a person loves for others, not for oneself. So their whole life is documented. Whether it's images, videos, they would not they need another lifetime just to go through it. But wherever they are, it's always about taking a snapshot, taking a video. We don't enjoy the crashing of the waves, the scent of the jungle, the tantalizing cool, calm breeze. We don't enjoy the moment, but we preserve it for everybody else to presume we enjoy it. So Sahaba Azra he doubted his own sincerity. What level of Iman where Amirul Mu'mineen goes to Huzaifa radiallahu an and says, I don't want to know the names of the Munafiqeen and hypocrites. I want to know if my name is there. Ayatul Munafiq Thalatha Idha Haddatha Kadhaba When he speaks, he speaks lies. وَإِذَا وَعَدَ أَخْلَفَ When he makes a promise, he contravenes. وَإِذَا أَكْمِنَ خَانَ And when he's made trustworthy, he breaches the trust. In another riwayat, وَإِذَا خَاسَمَ فَجَرَ When there's an argument, a, a debate, then he becomes a fajr, a transgressor. وَمَنْ أَعَانَ عَلَى خُسُومَةٍ بِظُلْمٍ Whoever assists in any conflict, through oppression, then he has bought the anger of Allah. And that has become the common norm nowadays. So we argue, and when arguing in a situation, for example, business partners, there's some dispute in the business. So then one decides a method to usurp his wealth. So how will I get all of the business? How will I take it over? So that's not even his haq, but he's planning and plotting against the command of Allah. Somebody owes you money, maybe he lost it legitimately. So go to the muftiya and say, you know what, we had a mudarabat agreement, I was an investor, and he was going to do all the work, and the money was lost legitimately. What's the masla? The masla is you invested, like how you were profit, you benefited and you were happy. When is the loss? Write it off and move on with life. But we still hold people responsible, now the billah, and then we hold him responsible for the projected profits, the loss of revenue. So it seems like we get in dunya, but we sell in our akhirat for a few pennies. Likewise, inheritance for decades, that state is not sorted out. Why? Because everybody is pulling to their side, they want benefit. So four signs of a munafiq, most of it is connected to the tongue because the tongue is a mirror of the heart. So we make a promise, we contravene in. Your tongue said something. I'm going to be here, Pa Bandi, to be on time, to be particular. Imam Nawi Rahmatullah says that this hadith clearly explains that a person has the sifat of a munafiq. So he should be very careful. You should be very careful. Somebody asked Imam Ahmed Rahmatullah كَيْفَ نَعْرِفُ الْكَذَّابِينَ How will we understand and recognize people who are liars? He said بِمَوَاعِدِهِمْ See what they say and they stick to it. So even if you give somebody a time, stick to it. That's a sign of the internal kayfit of the heart. So these masks, the Bano is uh, listed six thinking caps in the field of psychology, a technique for decision making, and then psychologists have uh, identified the 16 personality types. So they are giving us their perspective of what personality a person can be. We can go through each one, but if effort is made on Iman and Akhirah and uh, on Deen, 
Then the riwayat of Azabullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu inna Allah qasama baynakum akhlaqakum kama qasama baynakum arzaqakum Like how your risk has been distributed and stipulated, your akhlaq has also been distributed and stipulated. So number one, you're inherently born with certain good qualities, nurture that. Secondly is, the other qualities which are out there in the ummah, find those qualities and imbibe those qualities. Number three, the sifat of Nabi Alayhi Salaam is distributed in the Ummah. The closer you get to the sifat of Nabi Alayhi Salaam, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُؤْتِ الدُّنْيَا مَنْ يُحِبُّ وَمَنْ لَا يُحِبُّ Allah gives dunya to somebody who he loves or who he does loves. Means there's no criteria for dunya. Whether Allah loves you or doesn't love you, there's no criteria for dunya. But for deen, وَلَا يُؤْتِ الدِّينَ إِلَّا مَنْ يُحِبُّ but if Allah loves you, then He will grant you deen. فَمَنْ أَعْطَاهُ اللَّهُ الدِّينَ فَقَدْ أَحَبَّهُ That's a sign that Allah loves this person that is increasing in his deen. So amongst the 16 personalities, the duty fulfiller, serious, quiet, interested, security, and peace, and loving, extremely thorough, responsible, dependable, well-developed powers of concentration, usually insisting, in supporting, promoting traditions and establishments, well-organized, hard-working, then the mechanic. Quiet reserve interested in how and why things work, excellent skills and mechanical things, uh, loyal to their peers, to their value systems, the nurturer, quiet, kind, conscientious, depends, usually puts needs of others above their own needs, stable, practical values, security and traditions, well developed sense of space and function. The artist, quiet, seriously sensitive, serious, sensitive does not like conflict, does not like doing things which may generate conflict, loyal, faithful, extremely well-developed senses, the protector, quiet, forceful, original, sensitive, tend to stick to things until they are done, extremely intuitive about people and concerned for their feelings, well-developed value systems which are strictly adhered to, the idealist, quiet, reflective, idealistic, interested in serving humanity, well-developed value system, strive to live in accordance with the rules, extremely loyal, adaptable, and uh, the scientists, independent, original, analytical, determined, have an exceptional ability to turn theories into plans of action, highly v valuable knowledge, competency, structure, driven to derive meaning from visions, long range, thinkers. The thinker, logical, original, creative thinker, becomes very excited on theories and ideas, the doer friendly, adaptable, action oriented, focus money in immediate results, living here and now, risk takers who love fast paced lifestyle, impatient with long explanations, extremely loyal to their peers, not usually respectful to laws and rules, the guardian, practical, traditional, organized, not interested in theory of section, has a clear vision of things, loyal and hard working, Exceptional capability of organizing and running activities, the performer. People oriented to fun loving make things more fun for others. Then you get the caregiver, the inspirer, the giver, the visionary, the executive. To get a chance, we can go through these qualities. The point I'm mentioning this is that they, these psychologists and researchers say this is one quality which a person can get in their life. But in realistically, if you look at the mantra and mizaj of deen, not only one quality we can get in our life, but we can get multi qualities in our life if we make the right effort and in the right direction with regards to akhirat, a person can progress to levels which never can be comprehended and fathomed. So, this mask will be identified at the time when it is tested. So normally we'll make big dawa, big statements, but at the time when it's tested, then the mask comes out. And the different different faces are seen. But remember these masks also are satanic, just like Halloween. And when they do the rituals, they wear masks because actually internally you got the mask of Iblis. Now you need to show the mask of Iblis externally. Because there was a woman that ran very happy, elated, excited in the house one morning and she screamed to her husband, where are you, where are you, pack up your stuff, I just won, I won a, a big amount of money. So the husband was shocked, is it true? She said, yes, yes. 
So he said, uh, shall I pack for warm weather or cold? Addressing the wife. She said, whatever you want to. I don't really care. Just as long as you're out of the house by noon. As long as you're out of the house by noon. So at the time when we confronted, we'll see and realize what mask we wear in. So sometimes when something's supposed to be at its climax and it is peak of life, but is looked down upon when we don't have priority. So example, marriage. Marriage should have been the climax of our life, but when we do not have the usuls and the principles of deen and sharia, then it will be looked down upon and will be regarded as a burden and a calamity, whether it is a bounty, it's a ni'mat, nikah can be a jannat or jahannam, you'll be parad you have paradise on earth or hell. So let's say somebody was asked a question, why do most men die before their wives? So the reply came, because they want to, because they want to. The honeymoon period is over when the husband calls home to say he'll be late for dinner. And the answering machine says, it's in the microwave. The answering machine says, it's in the microwave. The husband asked the wife, honey, why are you wearing your wedding ring on the wrong finger? So the wife says, because I married the wrong man. Because I married the long, wrong man. Somebody said, I love being married. It's so great to find the one special person you want to annoy for the rest of your life. A woman went to the police to report her husband missing. The officer asked, a friend was with her, accompanying her, so the officer asked, describe your husband, we need to prepare a report and circulate his description. So she said he's 35, 6 foot 2 inches tall, dark eyes, dark wavy hair, athletic build, weighs ideal weight, soft-spoken, good with the children, very, very obedient and never ever gave me any inconvenience. So the neighbor was there whispered into the ears of the lady. She said he's five foot two inches, he's very chubby, he's bald, he has a big mouth and he's always been mean to the children, what are you talking about? So the wife whispered to her, I know, and she smiled, but who wants him back? Who? wants him back, so we're giving a description, so never find him at all. He said he was a millionaire and after 50 years of marriage, they both lived a miserable life. So one day he went into his attorney and he said, I want my wife to inherit everything. And the condition must be that she must be married within a certain amount of time. After my death, within this period, she needs to get married. So the lawyer said, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to do that? So he said, because I want someone to be sorry I died. I want someone to be sorry that I died. So that thing which is supposed to be a ni'mat and a bounty becomes a azab and a punishment. So we start wearing that mask as well. Somebody said, I recently read that love is entirely a matter of chemistry. That must be why my wife treats me like toxic waste. That must be why my wife treats me like toxic waste. There's a couple who had an argument because it was, they were married for 50 years and they were deciding what to do to commemorate this long period. But they could not find a solution. They could not find a solution. So the husband sent the wife a gift, a tombstone written on it, here lies my wife cold as ever. And she sent him a note with a tombstone, here lies my husband, stuffed at last. So nikah, marriage, you're going to be at log edge, you'll be fighting with each other forever and ever and ever. That's not the object but we need to be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, connected to deen, we will see barakah. The amal for today is,
fortunate is a person who practices on knowledge. وَأَمْسَكَ الْفَضْلَ مِنْ قَوْلِهِ And controls his tongue. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا نِلْحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ